Hello there. Zero 360 was at Wise Accra, the largest gathering of stakeholders and leaders in the education industry. We had the opportunity to talk to some of the guests at the event about some of the problems in our education system and some of the solutions we can implement to ensure quality education in Africa. Hi, I'm Julia Moffitt and I'm the founder and CEO of the Future of Learning Fund, which is based in Nairobi, Kenya. So we are interested in finding and investing in education entrepreneurs who are promoting 21st century education and learning businesses. We're looking for business ideas that are reinventing education in a fairly transformational way and looking for ideas that have the potential to be exponential and not just incremental in their change. Uh, all of the businesses we're looking at and supporting are tech enabled and scale focused and quite a lot of them are now uh, about out-of-school solutions and also solutions for lifelong learning and adult learning as much as for in-school. Well, I'm, I'm personally and the fund is interested in the reinvention of education and learning globally and what that means to help young people have more engaging learning experiences, be more employable, have teachers become effective knowledge workers and create more relevant and quality education. And my interest in Africa is that it seems like it's going to be as big here as anywhere. I think we believe strongly that the continent has the potential to shape the future of learning as much as Silicon Valley does and that it shouldn't have to wait the next 30 years while the rest of the world figures this out uh, but rather has factors and forces innovation creativity population growth talent needs that are going to really uh, help propel it to the front of uh, the reinvention if it wants to be Great question. I don't think I do feel that the solutions are there yet where you can throw one out in favor of the other. But I do think, uh, as we said on the panel, that billions of dollars are being spent in investing in traditional models of education that are now proven to be failing around the world. They're proven to be antiquated, not connecting you to employability, and not creating the necessary knowledge, skills, and attitudes you're going to need to have 14 jobs over your, your lifetime, if not more. And so I think on the one hand, we have evidence, right? The results are mixed, and that's putting it nicely around what, uh, what the investment in education is leading to. And we're starting to see new problems around relevance. So as I mentioned, the average time it takes in sub-Saharan Africa to get a job when you're done with tertiary is five years, which is just, uh, it, it can't be value for money. So on the one hand, you know, I think it's not that everything's going wrong, but it's that almost all of the investment is going into that system when we're getting feedback around the world that it needs to be updated. So I would say that it's just we need more emphasis into the necessary ingredients to, 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 to lead to the innovations that can start to do this differently. And I think the, the numbers are great, the gaps are great, the speed of things has to be great. The, the, the public sector cannot do this transformation fast enough. And so I would advocate more investment, attention, and dollars need to go into helping make sure that the more innovative leapfrogging solutions are, are available. I think the essence of your question it will, um, will be the foundation for a lot of interesting business ideas that come about. I think you know the, the main point, and I think you're saying it, is that all of these interesting solutions are going to be born out of tremendous need. They're not frivolous. They're not some nice to have, but they really are going to be addressing uh, tremendous problems in the way that leapfrogging solutions have done in financial services and energy. So off-grid energy is now going to be as popular as on-grid energy uh, and mobile phone banking is going to be as popular as traditional banking in the same way that we did the landline. So when you start applying that on the education level, you start thinking it's not about some crazy thing. You know, Uber is still a taxi cab service. It's just you call them differently. 
right? It used to be you had to put your hand up on the side of the road or whatever you do, and now you do it with your, your phone. And PESA is about getting you banked. It's just you don't have a bank, you have a phone, right? And so I think at the end of the day, the educational goals and needs are gonna be the same. It's just the roadmap of how you get there and whether you can jump faster by doing things differently. Um, so I think the example we just used is you know, maybe we will see technology platforms in which you know, everybody's a teacher and you can go and learn everything. Yeah, and I know that's heretical in a public sector discussion around school systems, but really? Maybe it's not. <laughs> uh, yeah. Certainly, I think on education finance, it's not going to be the banks anymore. I think that there'll be lots of opportunities to go and find a finance because you can get a different kind of a credit score, et cetera. Um, and, and so that's an example of leapfrogging. I'm not sure I have the answers to that. I, I, I think I'd only have one answer, which has been addressed throughout the conference, which is you, know, you really got to learn how to learn. And you really got to know how to learn because you are really going to be reinventing yourself over and over again. And you now live in a knowledge economy, a creative economy, in which almost every piece of information is available at your fingertips. And so it's a question of how you learn to navigate that, self-teach, invent, and thrive as a result. And I think that's informal or formal. I think in the formal economy, you're just going to have corporations providing you now with all, all the time learning constantly. So the question is, if you're in the informal economy, which is the majority, do you have those tools at your fingertip? But I'm, in, I'm investing in mobile learning businesses now that are personalized learning that are, I don't know if anybody uses Apple or, or everybody's on an Android, they're like having Siri at your fingertips for an almost illiterate rural uh, population. Uh, and, and one company that I'm I investing in you know, is using unused 2G networks to do voice learning for rural, uneducated populations or almost illiterate populations. So I think you know, stick with the problem and then use all the things at your fingertips.